Hello and welcome to Life 2.0 Retirement Strategies. I'm Sarah Peterson here with Richard Pelletier of Help to Retire. It's so great to see you today. Nice to be back, Sarah. I feel like we always have way too much to talk about. and There are just so many things that we need to talk about in planning for retirement, including the six Ps, which are, you know, my favorite Prior planning prevents pretty poor performance. And I'll never be able to say it, so oh, I'm always going to throw that to you. A <laughs> couple more shows, you'll come right off the top of your head. Well, there is a P that is not in there, and that's procrastination. Uh, and that's something we, you know, we need to talk about it because we all procrastinate when it comes to planning for retirement. Human beings, by their very nature, hate change. Uh, and if there's nothing greater in change in life, it's walking away from that job, no more salary, and now you're retired, which is why we call this show Life 2.0. It is a new life and requires some adjustments and rather rapidly because what we find is their assets are still in the accumulation phase, which is in many cases too risky uh, and is focused on growing the assets. When you're retired and there's no more paychecks, you got to go from accumulating those assets to holding on to those assets. That requires some modification. You know, interesting you say that. There is a big difference between sort of the stockbrokers that people are dealing with during that accumulation phase. They're really just focused on money's coming in, how do we grow it, and it is a different process planning for retirement in preservation. Well, again, uh, you have to think about your assets and say, listen, uh, I've gotten to that age and money and status and pension, whatever, and now I start a brand new life. Uh, what needs to be trimmed, modified, and adjusted at that point? So uh, you start to take a look at these assets and say, listen, uh, I've got the assets, but are they generating the income I'm going to leave? Retirement is not about assets. It's about the flow of income. Do they cover your expenses? Do you have extra money to take nice trips? Is there a deficiency every single month? How are we going to make up the deficiency? I've sent some of my clients $1,000 each month. I think my, my biggest client, I send $7,000 out of their portfolio every single month. Let me tell you, when that market dropped last year, remember February 12th, COVID hit, the market went down 36%. It went from 29.5 on February the 12th to about 18.5 on March the 23rd. That is a 36% drop. Do I really want to write out checks and those assets are that depressed? Of course not. So you have to plan that that dip is going to happen at some point during your entire career. Get those big up and down swings, which you want to get down and modulate so that if there is a drawdown, it's slight. You're able to go into that situation and say, listen, we have other assets that are liquid, uh, that are fixed dollars, and we'll take that monthly check out of there until the market comes back up. That requires planning. Well, when is the right time, though? I mean, we all put it off. And we, you know, I, I'm in the stage where I, my children are still young. We're in the spending phase of life. We're accumulating and spending faster than we can really keep up with. It's very intimidating for a lot of people to start thinking, maybe someday I'm actually going to be able to not work and enjoy my life. Well, well, I find an awful lot people come in for retirement. And I look at their expenses. I say, we, you forgot to add health insurance. Your, your Social Security check you, da, you have as your gross amount, you're going to pay taxes on some of that, and there's something deducted from that Social Security check every single month. It's called your Part B health insurance premium for your out-of-hospital, uh, for your doctor's visit, et cetera. Uh, for most people, that can be a $148 deduction. Uh, I hate to tell you, it's mean-tested. If you continue working part-time in your practice, you have a business, you make a decent amount of money, uh, that deduction can be four, five, six hundred dollars $600 a month. That means that check can literally every year get smaller and smaller and smaller. Different people are in different situations. But you're talking about a process where you go from accumulation now you're going to start talking about preservation. We can't lose any money. At some point, even if you, your first year retirement, you're doing quite good on the cash flow. At some point in the future, inflation, you're going to need more. Now you start distributing out of that account. And, of course, the last phase is for mothers and fathers, very important. They want that legacy to go to their children, not the U.S. Treasury. Which, you know, for all of us, we think we work so hard and we have earned the right to enjoy our lives and also to leave behind something. And it is a, it's very, very important to start planning for that tax legacy. And as we've talked about before, that tax time bomb to not go off for our children so that they have something to, you know, enjoy from your hard work. Well, let me give an example uh, uh, the other day in the office. A uh, couple were retiring, reasonably young. I think they were like 63 or 64. That's young for me, I got to tell you. Uh, and I said, listen. Uh, you're, 
no longer having a highly compensated in income for both of you. So this year, your income is going to drop dramatically. So from this point forward until a defined date, when you turn 72, your income is going to go up dramatically. They had very large IRAs and 401ks. The distribution required at age 72 today guarantees a tax rate is going to go much higher. I call those sweet years. Day you retire, no more high income tax. The days you don't require to any distributions, it pops up at 72. Now, Congress right now is proposing for younger ones to turn that not to 72, but to 73. For people even younger than that, to 74, and they'll phase it into 75. That means I've got a lot more years to take money out of their IRA or their 401k at a low tax rate before the tax rate guaranteed go up at 72. You know, th this is such a big topic. We all could never have prepared for what was about to happen in 2020. <laughs> and now we're revisiting. We have to relook at our priorities, and, and planning is so important. But how do we, with short of having a crystal ball, know where this is all going and how to prepare for it? Well, you have to understand one thing. Most people will recognize the fact that currently, if they're retired or are going to be shortly, once they're retired, their tax rates are at the lowest they've ever been. That may sunset in 2025 or sooner if this Congress wants to ram this thing through and no one could stop them. So if you know the taxes are low now, bite the bullet. Some CPAs think I'm nuts. You're going to pay taxes by moving money out of the IRA prematurely before they turn to 72? Of course. I just did their tax rate and they're relatively low right now and they believe it's going to be much higher. With this Congress, of course it's going to be higher. So why not beat them to the punch, get the money out put into a Roth, and the Roth grows forever tax-free. That requires some planning. Prior planning prevents pretty poor performance. I'm glad you're doing it, because I'm certainly not. Well, we're going to have to take a quick commercial break in a minute, so I'd love for you to let the viewers out there know what it is that you're offering when they give us a call. Will do. When you give us a call, 833-579-5500, this is a complimentary review of comprehensive review of your financial plan that's personalized to you. Other advisors charge $1,000 or more for this, and Richard, you're offering it completely complimentary today. It's a nice hour, a free cup of coffee, and some good advice. You had me at coffee. All right, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to talk more about the mistakes that we make in planning for our retirement. As a good saver, you've been putting away money during your working years. Studies find that the biggest fear of retirees is running out of money. Market volatility isn't just the downward movement of stock prices, it's the size and frequency of change. The more dramatic the ups and downs, the higher the volatility. This can put savers who are newly retired or a few years away from being retired at greater risk. Today's generation of retirees is not receiving traditional pensions as our parents or grandparents did. Instead, we have retirement accounts such as 401ks or 403bs. These accounts typically expose your money to market risk. The last thing you want right before retirement is to lose a portion of the money you need for income. But how do you turn these accounts into a retirement income? Is it safe to keep all your retirement money sitting in the stock market? The last thing you want is to lose a portion of the money you need for income due to market loss. By working with a financial professional, you can learn how to turn a portion of your savings into an income stream for life and income for the life of your spouse if you're married. We all have moments in our lives when we wish we had taken action sooner. Don't let procrastination rain on your retirement parade. Act now before it's too late. Please call our office to set up your no-cost, no-obligation retirement income review today. Hello and welcome back to Life 2.0 Retirement Strategies. I'm Sarah Peterson here with Richard Pelletier and we're talking about procrastination because this is one of the biggest problems that you see, I'm sure, in planning for retirement. What do you say for the people out there who are thinking, okay, well, I plan to retire next month and I really don't have a plan? Well, it happens a lot more than you would think. Uh, that retirement day people dream about when they're in their 30s and 40s, somewhere around 60 years old, it seems to come much, much faster at you. And even though it's coming right in your face, very few people really roll up their sleeves and do any kind of planning. It just happens. It'll all work out. Well, life doesn't really work that way. If you do nothing, 
well, the world is going to do something to you. And of course, Congress and taxation can be really brutal. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, I had a fellow the other day in my Lee, Massachusetts office. Uh, we've been working with him for a number of years. His wife just retired from a bank. Uh, and they had Social Security and a part-time job. Let's say their total gross income in that household was $44,000. Not exactly wealth, but not poverty either. So working with their CPA in October, in our October club, we talked about that earlier, uh, we get those clients in the office. Has anything changed in this tax year? No, it's just about the same as last year. We didn't win the mega bucks this year either. You too, huh? Okay, so then we call up the CPA and we worked out, said at that particular year, we could take $53,000 out of his IRA and move it taxation-wise into the Roth. When I took the federal tax bill with an additional $53,000 of taxable income by moving it into the Roth, what was the Fed bill? What was the state of Massachusetts bill? I add those two together. I divide it by the gross income of 90000 plus. Their tax rate was 14.78%. Wow. That's not a high percentage when you come down to that, of uh, moving 53 each single year. In 10 years, where are you? You have a half a million dollars in a Roth account, totally tax-free, It'll be available to your spouse as a widow or widower, totally tax-free. And you still have a lot of money. We're trying to drain the IRA. Let me ask you a question. Ten years down the road, and you need a brand-new car. What do you think a brand-new Camry is going to cost, middle-class car, in ten years? It's not going to be $35,000. You take it out of the IRA. Let's say the price is fifty. dollars Well, you take it out of the IRA. You need to take out sixty. dollars Uncle Sam wants to be paid. Give me the money. I take the $50,000 out of my Roth. It goes to the car dealer, I get a new car. You pay no taxes. That's awful important to the widow order. It's even more important to the children. When you say no taxes, my ears perk up because, you know, we all have to pay taxes. It's our right as, you know, citizens of the United States, and we are given that freedom, which is we are so blessed to have. But we don't want to pay too much, so there is a, quite a bit of planning that goes into, you know, the retirement strategies where we don't have the accumulation like we do in our younger years? Well, procrastination can take many forms. Uh, we sit down in initial consultation, and I will say, do you have a will? Oh, yeah, I got a will. I said, do you have a durable power of attorney? What's that durable power of attorney? I said, well, that's the money that saves your IRA for your spouse instead of the nursing home. If you don't have one, you're going into probate court for conservatorship. Let's go on to the taxes. I got, took a look at your tax return. You're in a very, very low tax rate. You've got a very, very big IRA. Why didn't your CPA tell you you could take money out of that very low cost and move it over to a Roth and what the benefits were? How about your stockbroker? I'm looking at an account and you're still in a very aggressive mode. I look at your March 2020 statement. The market went down 36%. What did your account go? Oh, it's recovered. I said, I didn't ask you what it recovered or not. What did it go down? In 2001 and two, the stock market went down 52%. It took years and years and years to recover. How about 2007 and eight? How many years did it take? It went down 38%. Again, just because the last thing that's in your memory, it was a quick recovery, doesn't mean the next one won't be. So you can be very careful about the risk factor in a Stop procrastinating and get that thing adjusted for retirement mode, preservation mode. And I know we've discussed this before, but even, you know, my generation where we're sort of accumulating and spending, these are times where you're starting to plan. I mean, I can only imagine that when I retire, I'm going to someday get to go to Hawaii, sans children, with that nice frosty beverage in my hand. But in order to get between here and there, there's a lot of planning. The umbrella? Yeah, yeah. And that's okay. exactly what I'm thinking about. I had about. one of those once. <laughs> once. <laughs> one. <laughs> But there, there's a lot of planning that can go on, and I would rather start planning now, even though I know my retirement's probably, you know, 20, 25 years out. I'd rather start planning for that now. Well, again, we, let's talk about procrastination. Again, even if they come to me a week after they retire, how long is How many times has that happened? A lot. I know. A lot. A lot. More than I like to. But let's take people where we find them, which is what we do as advisors. Uh, they don't have long-term care insurance. They, it's too expensive. They're not going to acquire it. What's plan B if the unthinkable happens? Uh, they have documents which are defective many times. They're prepared by the wrong attorney for the wrong reason who didn't even know that you bought that house in Florida two years ago. Hmm. Florida doesn't accept Massachusetts power of attorneys. Wow. Won't accept it. Why? You didn't put the description of the property in the new power of attorney. With our coordination, they will add that. All right? So you say to them, you're procrastinating up to this point. 
But if you're going to be retired for 10, 20, 30 years, now we've got a 30-year horizon. We want to anticipate every disaster can happen, plan it out on paper, have a plan to respond to it, not react, so we can preserve these assets for you, your wife, your children, and not the nursing home, not the Internal Revenue Service, not the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Well, I love how you have your little October reviews with people, too, because the, the only thing constant in life is change, and we know that between now, you know, here and there, what's going to happen? A lot of changes, divorces, deaths, you know, illnesses, new careers, positive, negative, whatever it is. There's going to be a lot of change, and we have to continuously review these things. Well, if life changed while you were working over 30, 40 years, what makes you think your life isn't going to change for you, your spouse, and children over the next 30 years? Of course it's going to change. If you don't have an October review and look at the situation with months left in the tax year to make adjustments each year, you can make those fine adjustments and land up in a location and destination you want rather than a location that somebody else wants. So for the listeners who are thinking, okay, well, I did retire a few months ago, but I really don't have this kind of plan, it's never too late to, to stop and review and come yeah. in and have a complimentary consultation. What we tell people, we want to basically provide shark repellent around their assets. And when we look at the assets, they say, listen, these things are totally exposed to the internal revenue service. They know exactly how much money in that account on December 31st because your custodian tattles. We have $487.15, whatever the case may be. They know exactly where the money is. They know it's pre-tax. Uh, you know, you, you look at the whole situation on a holistic basis and say, listen, this thing is just not coordinated. Your lawyer's not talking to the CPA. CPA's not talking to your stockbroker. And what do you land up? A hodgepodge. And sooner or later, you're going to pay a price for that. I love that you use the word holistic. I'm a big fan of holistic medicine, and I feel like this is very similar. We have to look at the whole big picture. It's not just one body part. It's all the parts working together, and you have a team. It's not just you in your office. When someone out there gives you a call, they're going to get your whole team. Yeah. I, I well, love that we have a large group in the office. What we try to provide to the client is a large group of experts who are fiduciaries, who have subspecialties in Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, long-term care insurance. Uh, they may not need me today. They may need uh, Jeff Harder, who basically is the head of our Medicare division, uh, knows all the programs. Uh, I work for the Medicare department when I closed my law practice of the Aetna. I dealt with basically the unions. I dealt with the retirement boards of the cities and towns of Massachusetts. Uh, that's very different than dealing with Mr. and Mrs. Jones, who said, I take this plan or I take that plan. I don't know those plans. Jeff, come on and sit down with these folks and help them. Uh, Matt Dunn is our Social Security expert, lectures up and down the East Coast about how to apply for Social Security, when and who, and talk about spousal, all that strategy. I know what general things, but my expertise is, oh, oh we got somebody calling for the nursing home. They don't have long-term care. The cost is $14,000 a month. $14,000 a month? That's one high-priced hotel. You've got to admit that. I ran a 200-bed nursing home. Uh, you don't have a chef in a nursing home. You, uh, you, you know, uh, you got a cook who's on parole. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's potato you, you, with a straw. You get well, the idea? Hopefully between here and there, there is that vacation that we've all wanted to take. But we're going to take a quick commercial break. That phone number again is 833-579-5500. Give us a call. Sometimes the phone lines get very busy. And when we come back, we'll talk more about procrastination and why we don't want to do that in planning for retirement. How confident are you in your current financial plan? Do you know with certainty how the recent market volatility will affect your future hopes and dreams? How much are you paying in taxes? And how much are you losing to unnecessary high fees? You didn't work to save this money so that you could spend your time worried in retirement. Now is the time to take charge of your finances so you can feel confident about your future. Call in during the next 30 minutes of today's show only to set up an absolutely complimentary, no obligation, full-blown financial review that will result in your own customized written plan. This is a $999 value that we're giving away complimentary to the first 10 people who respond. We'll start with a full-blown analysis of what you already have. By running a report to untangle how much you are currently paying in fees, how you're allocated for risk, and what it's costing to work with your current advisor. Next, we'll identify your goals. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Where do you want to go? And who do you hope to go there with? Is your current financial plan set up to get you there without mishap? 
Let's design a roadmap to create a financial plan you can follow with confidence. Get the piece that so many people are missing from their retirement. Find out how having a written plan can make a difference to your retirement dreams. Call now to schedule your complimentary, no-obligation, full-blown financial review today. Hello and welcome back to Help to Retire, Life 2.0 Retirement Strategies with Richard Pelletier. I'm Sarah Peterson, and we are talking about procrastination and why we shouldn't do it. And there is something that we haven't discussed, which I think is very relevant. You know, a lot of people, they say things like, oh, I've had the same financial advisor my whole life, and they're not meeting with them, they're not reviewing, they're not hearing any of the topics we've just been discussing today, and they still stay and they stagnate. And why do you think they do that? Well, when you're talking about procrastination, especially when you're dealing with an ongoing existing relationship that, that's gone long term, uh, very rarely uh, when they look at that, uh, they ask the, the critical questions. And when you get into procrastination, they, they have a feeling that the market is going up big time, but their assets aren't. Uh, and there's a total lack of disclosure of all the fees in their portfolio or the assets they own. Uh, understand, a fiduciary has an obligation before they take on a client to reduce everything in writing, fully disclose their fees, and they have to disclose as well any possible conflict of interest they have. Stockbroker has no such obligation whatsoever. Uh, let me give you an example of what happened in my office the other day. Client comes in, we're going through all their assets, say, well, well let's, this variable annuity uh, that your broker sold you, uh, why is it not grown an awful lot? And they said, well, the market's been up, it's been down. I said, well, let's call the insurance company that has the money and let's ask them questions on a recorded telephone line. Uh, by the time we got off, the phone, got all the real cost of this particular uh, annuity. We did the calculation, and believe it or not, this is true, I have many times, for every dollar that they made with this instrument, the insurance company broker made a dollar. What's wrong with that formula? The expenses internally. Well, we, we have this, mark, this promise in this variable annuity that the market's crashing, we have this guaranteed income. I said, really, how much is that income? That much, the insurance company say, well, they could take $6,000 a year out of this account. I said, but based on the value of that account today, it's going to take them 17 and a half years before they get to the bottom of their money and start to get the insurance company's money. How old are you today? That happens when you're 87 years old. Uh, how many years are you going to left? So the mathematics usually don't work. Sometimes they do, but rarely. Expenses are too high, benefits are too low. You have to know that before you go another 10 years with that instrument. And I know annuities can be a valuable instrument, but they do tend to get a, a bad reputation a lot of times. We've talked about tools in prior meetings here. Uh, a tool worked properly can have a major benefit. Example, if I've got somebody sitting in the nursing home and I can take the money that's going to go to the nursing home, take that away from that person, and give it to their spouse. I can take that money to an insurance company and buy a pension for the healthy spouse at home. That annuity will save hundreds of thousands of dollars, and it won't go to the nursing home. If the legal and the financials is set up in advance. If they're not, you've got a real problem. And that's why it's so important to have this team of people that you work with and, and they're in, you know, integrating with one another versus, you know, you see a doctor for your heart, you see a doctor for your foot, you see, and they're all not talking to each other. We're all part of one body. And the same thing with your finances. I had a conversation with a lawyer, I think, two days ago. And I said, listen, lawyer to lawyer, I'm looking at your document and I can't use this document to take money out of the husband's account if he has a stroke. He said, what's the problem with it? I said, number one, it only becomes effective when the doctor says he's cuckoo or incapacitated. There's no HIPAA clause in here. How does the wife get medical information from her husband's doctor without a HIPAA release? Can't be done. So if you're button heads with the legal documents and preserving the assets, someone's got to clean that up. You have to amend the document. What amazes me that this is not part of our formalized education, you know, that we, we cover so many other topics in school, but the finances, you're, you graduate from college, presumably, you get a job, somebody maybe hands you a 401k, and then you're left out, you know, in the cold trying to figure it out. Nobody gives you this information until you're working with a professional. My mother raised us on Salata tea tags. You know those little things on the, on the Salata tea tags? Oh, you know? yeah. Okay. Prior prevention, it uh, comes down to it. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And I'd rather work on preventing a scenario 
than find myself cleaning up the mess somebody else made for us. And that's the whole thing about a holistic approach to your assets. We take a look at the assets, take a look at the legal documents, take a look at the tax return and say, listen, this is a hodgepodge. Your advisors are not talking together. And if this happens, if that guy has a stroke, lands up in a nursing home, and we can't get that money out of his IRA without a court order. You ever been to probate court? No. I used to walk to probate court when they paid me by the hour as a lawyer. I walked very slowly. <laughs> okay? By the hour. Okay? You get into courtroom, bunch of lawyers. Yeah, young lawyer, go up there, talk to the judge. I'll wait my turn. Ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. All right? An hour later, you get the judge's attention for about two minutes, and out the door you go, and you walk slower <laughs> back to your seat. $1,500 for the morning's work. Uh, you never want to have your assets in a probate court. It's a very if inefficient. But you don't want to have probate assets on your assets when you're alive. People think probate is only when you're dead. You want to prevent, prevent uh, probate when you're dead. Anyway, that can be done. But most people don't prevent probate taking charge of your assets when you're alive and in a nursing home. Absolutely. Well, I'd love to give these people, because we're always running out of time, a real idea of what happens when they give you a call uh, at 833-579-5500. What's the process like? The process basically is coming in with your tax return, coming with your statements, sitting down, having a cup of coffee, and let's find out what's really bugging you. You may have concerns that are very annoying, like a pebble in your shoe. You have other concerns that are keeping you up at night. i got to figure out which is which. My job description is, what are your concerns? Can I help you? If I can, I will tell you. If I can, I say, listen, I need permission to talk to your CPA. I need permission for your attorney to disclose and to have a conversation with me. If you'll open up those lines of communications, I will coordinate this, and we'll get this thing cured and a lot faster than you think. So if someone's sitting there thinking, I've spoken with my uh, stockbroker about a couple years ago, he's never talked to me about the tax time bomb, he's never talked to me about a Roth IRA, any of these other options, this is a good time to come and get a second opinion. It's completely complimentary. I know other advisors charge $1,000 or more for this, so they can give you a call and get that second opinion to review. Six Ps. Prior planning prevents pretty pure performance. I mean, at some point you're going to slip up, but you've done pretty well up until now. We'll get it. And I've never even tried. It's always wonderful talking to you. We learn so much each time, and that education is invaluable. You're giving a complimentary today, so I think it's very special. Again, that phone number is 833-579-5500. Sometimes our phone lines get very busy. Please have patience. We'll get through, and we will get you scheduled with Richard and his wonderful team, and we'll get that cup of coffee after all. Give me sugar. Next time, I will try to say the six Ps, but uh, we'll try it next time. It's always wonderful. Until the next time, we'll talk more about ways to prepare for retirement that allow us to have that frosty beverage on the other side. Thanks so much for being with us. Hold the umbrella. <laughs>